What we're looking at here is a wood beam that uh, rotted and needed to be replaced. And basically I just replaced it back to its original condition. The reason why I took the notch out of the beam was because of the framing plates here. The framing plates were in the way and I had to notch it. And of course this is what the beam looked like after it was put back in. Of course it was a column holding it up. I think it had a four by four at the end of it. It was about a four foot span. Now, the reason why I did this, you know, you're probably thinking, man, that's a big chunk you took out of the beam. And if you watch the video before this and the one after, you're going to have a little more uh, knowledge about uh, why I actually did this. You know, sometimes you run into a situation where you think, I can't do this because it's, um, you know, just because the building inspector passed it years ago uh, doesn't mean that it meets current building codes or engineering specs today, but this is where you're going to have to use a little common sense. And again, I'm not suggesting that you don't contact a structural engineer if you're really concerned about something like this. But at the same time, I also wouldn't really suggest cutting the plates out without uh, putting a strap on it and uh, putting the right strap on it with, with that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and explain to you the reason why I did this with a few illustrations to give you a better idea. Here's a regular wood beam or the illustration of one. Um, this is conventional lumber. This does not apply. This video does not apply to engineered lumber, glue lamps or paralamps. Uh, if you take a notch out of the beam, uh, basically top of the beam, you're basically reducing the thickness of the beam and uh, the structural size of the beam in most cases you'll be reducing the size. I mean, there are some stipulations. I'm just kind of throwing this out there as a general rule of thumb. If you take a four by eight beam, let's just pretend like that's what we're looking at here, and you take a two inch notch out of it, then uh, you have just reduced the size of the beam to a four by six. And this is this is kind of a general rule of thumb again. You could get into, this could be a gray area. I'm just kind of throwing this out there to give you an idea of what actually happens to the structural strength of most beams once you notch them. So in reality, the moment I took the notch out of the beam in the previous pictures, the ones that were in the beginning of the video, um, basically what I, was, what I ended up with was like a four by four. But I'm okay if you think about it because a four by four usually will carry a four foot load for a single story home. And you can also figure, uh, do a little uh, common sense reasoning here that the beam I was replacing had actually supported the building for at least 20 years. It probably wasn't going to be a big deal to take the notch out of it. And who knows, it might have even been uh, designed for that uh, specific reason. I don't know. I don't think so, but uh, just kind of throwing it out there. Now, if you notch out of the center of the beam, you will definitely reduce the size of the beam. Uh, this is no question at all. On the edge, the only reason why I'm saying that you might have a problem on the corners is because uh, in the previous video, you're basically allowed to notch a 45 degree angle out of the beam in most cases one quarter of the distance from the top. So if you divided the end of the beam into quarters, um, the width, you could actually, so if you had an eight inch wide beam, you could actually start with a two inch and then go at a 45 degree angle. And I'm probably going over what I already covered in the last video, just go watch the previous video for that. And this is the only reason why I'm saying you could um, actually gain a little more width um, in your beam size if you notch it out of the corner. But if you notch it out of the center, you have definitely reduced the size of the beam to the width of the remaining lumber. And remember that this information uh, basically only applies to conventional lumber. It might not apply to engineered uh, lumber, glue lambs, para lambs, uh, micro lambs. Who knows what lamb they're going to come up with next. So uh, anyway, I am going to make another video. This will be the last video on the beam. I mean, this next video will be the last video. 
So stay tuned. This is like one of those uh, action-packed uh, mini-series they have on TV. You're probably not going to be able to wait until the next video. But don't worry. Tomorrow I will have it done.